gathered here today to tell you about this 1960 Buick LeSabre. So Rob, how did you get this 60 Buick or how did you find it and how long did it take you to get it home? Yeah, there's a long, there's a little story with this car. So I originally found this car by mistake by helping taking down warehouse shelving. So it was in the opposite end of the building that we were taking down warehouse shelving. Um, I showed up early, went into the, the open door. The Buick was in that side. I uh, talked with the gentleman a little bit who owned it. He did say it was for sale. And about that time, it was, it was time to take down warehouse shelving. So we went to the other side of the building, took down warehouse shelving for the next three, four hours. And then I was like, man, I gotta get back over there and check out that Buick. And when I went back over to the other side of the building, he was gone. So the building was locked up and the Buick wasn't to be seen again till about three and a half years later. When he finally returned a phone call, I just called random numbers that I thought was his for on and off for that three and a half years. And one day he returned my call said, hey, this is so-and-so, I got a 60 Buick, and are you still interested? I was, sure, is it still for sale? And he asked me, how, how quick can you be over there? I said, I can be there in 15 minutes. He said, well, I'll see you there in 20. So I grabbed Shauna, Cletus, and we jumped into Dooley, and we went over there. On the ride over, I was telling Shauna that she needed to be the voice of reason, and we didn't need another car, but I definitely wanted to check it out because... It was pretty nice, and, and I thought I knew somebody I could hook up with it, so. And yeah, he said, be his voice of reason. We don't need another car. Don't let me take this thing home. No more cars. That's what I say uh, every, every, every time. No more cars. And we have a problem. That's right. We do have that. We have a so, problem. <laughs> anyway, we get there. Shauna entertains. The, the older gentleman smiles and listens to all the Buick stories that he has. Cletus is running around the yard, entertaining himself uh, and entertaining all of us, really. Yeah. So he's wanting to trade Cletus for the Buick. Shauna put her foot down, told him that was a hard no on trading yeah. Cletus for the Buick. We couldn't do that. Yeah, not happening at all. <laughs> so we wound up coming up with a price and I told the guy I'd take it. So yeah. Shauna failed at being my voice of reason. All I did was stand there and smile. She did do that and we have a 60 Buick. So this car was acquired to be just a quick little project and then move it on down the road. You know, just the interior was, was actually, it looked decent in it. Um, it had a little sun fading and, and stuff like that, but. Well, uh, like after you sat in it, what, two toms? It yeah. all kind of just like disintegrated. Yeah, the interior was definitely dry rotted and disintegrated. So that was, I guess, sign one that we were going to do a little more than anticipated with this car. And then it did have all sorts of just hand uh, equipment, brakes, shovels, had some lumber, just all sorts of stuff all over the top. And it busted the paint up pretty good on the roof. Yeah, and it was what, like it, a two, two foot diameter, like spot where the paint had peeled back yeah the paint was, was coming off and it was down to bare metal um it wasn't a very dry warehouse so it wasn't rusty it was all fresh steel um we got it here and i knew i had to do something with it pretty quick so i got a hold of chad with chad's custom dreams up in saluda it's about 45 minutes away from here he agreed that he was going to paint the roof so he told me all i had to do was strip it and get it ready so i commenced to strip in the roof one Saturday, or maybe it was a Friday night, I forget. But uh, once I got the roof stripped, it was very nice shape, and I started stripping the wings. So uh, when it got to Chad's <laughs> house, that's right, whoops, now we have to paint the roof and the trunk. But yeah. 
Chad was on board. Uh, he, he was very impressed with the car and, and what kind of shape it was in. And he was ready to have fun with just doing a wild low rider type paint job. Uh, so we went to work laying out patterns. Uh, we started in April, wound up finishing up in mid September. Um, it was, it was many sleepless nights for myself. Chad likes working at night. I like sleeping at night. But unfortunately, there's sacrifices to getting a wild paint job. So I worked hand in hand with Chad um, every weekend to get this car where it's at today. Chad's probably got a little more, little bit more time in it than I do because it was at his house. But there's probably yeah. 180 to 200 hours a piece in this thing. Yeah, and during all that time, y'all pretty much spent like every single weekend, just about two to three days a weekend, or two to three nights. And you start at what, like five, and you get home anytime between five a.m. and twelve p.m. the next day. Yeah, so there and then was go back at it. Many late nights, and Shauna was gracious enough to put up with that because I would leave at five and get home at five, sometimes later. It just depended on what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, but there's lots of material on this thing. There's there's five gallons, if not better, uh, than five gallons of paint and clear and flake and everything on the roof and trunk. Uh, that's not counting what we did on the body. So we did flat clear the body also. And then what are like all the materials cost just for the materials and their labor? Uh, like the roughly? Yeah, the materials alone, I got about $6,500 just in materials and stripping it and getting it to where it's at today. And yeah, it's that, not cheap. You that know, doesn't it, even include the labor or the hours or any, anything else. So. That's right. It takes um, a lot. It was all good quality stuff too. I said House of Color. Um, they actually had it at their Medco trade show in Atlantic City up in New Jersey at the end of October. So Paul, who uh, run Wicked Stitch Upholstery, he actually did the upholstery in about five or six weeks. I mean, he knocked it out of the park. I I got online, ordered some material, and if anybody's seen it, it's mohair, animal print, glitter vinyl. Pink, um, purple, silver everywhere. Yeah, and uh, it's got dingo balls in it. And, yeah. and I just took everything to Paul and said, make it happen. And, and what is in the car, um, I seen it when it was done. So it was such a quick turnaround. I had a, a rough idea of what Paul was going to do because we did some chalk lines on the old uh, door panels and, and seats before I took them to him. But the end is is all Paul and all his creation. Uh, he knocked it out of the park. It's definitely yeah. different. Um, he's with that low rider, Cheech and Chong type feel. Uh, it's not something you're going to see every day riding around. So No, not at all. It's a one of a kind. Yep. The car itself is a very low mile car, 51,000 original miles on this thing. It's got the original exhaust system. Um, original gas tank. Which original is gas pristine. tank, yep. It turned out being very nice shape. Um, radiators, original, the hoses. I really didn't do anything to this car except for rebuild the carburetor and did a, did a Petronix tune up. So we did the Petronix distributor, flamethrower coil, uh, plug wires, and plugs and threw some gas in it and fired it up. And so, the brakes, right? Yeah, I did put uh, wheel cylinders on it and a dual master cylinder from Willwood on the Buick. Um, but this thing's a pretty unique car. It's the last year for a torque tube drive shaft. So technically it's an enclosed drive shaft like uh, older vehicles had in it. And then it is a uh, push the gas pedal to start car. So you actually have to flip the key on and there is no start option. You you push the gas pedal to the floor, it engages the starter and the car starts. And then off you go. Off you go. Yeah, and it actually drives really smoothly. We it just took it to still in motion and actually that was what the first time we've really driven it around, right? Yeah, that's that's about um, the most miles it's had on it. Um, it's got a air lift, mm -hmm. uh, air management system and airbag suspension. Um, I made the, the brackets and stuff underneath it uh, there's really not a lot out there for Buicks. I mean, there is Cadillac and Impala and stuff. Um, but part of the reason for not driving it much is we did have gold 24 inch wires on it, uh, which the steel in motion show was not uh, welcoming anything bigger than 20s. So we had to change them. I did have a set of, of white walls on 15 inch rims. So we threw the white walls on it with some ripple caps and headed to steel in motion. Yeah, and then we put some mohair inside of the inner wells. And um, 
to give it an extra radical effect. Yep. It is it is pretty sweet. Yeah. So, and, and no, we don't know if it stays clean or dirty in the rain. Yeah. Not yet, at least. Yeah, this thing hasn't really been yeah. out in the rain much, so we don't know how the mohair is gonna gonna fare behind the front tires. Right. Yeah, and so we have a question for anyone watching this. Um, if you've seen it out at what, like Starbury car shows or at Rise to the Market or any show that it might have been out with either sets of wheels on it, either the 24 inch gold rims or the wide whites, we're curious to know what you think is best. Yeah, what do you guys like best? So help us help us put these things together. We got lots to come. Um, if anybody's visited, we do have some projects and uh, we like to get some input on, on how things uh, go. Obviously this is more of something I dreamed up uh, but how's everybody like it and what kind of wheels you want on it? So let us know in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more madness to come. Yeah. You ready to get this thing unloaded? I'm ready to do it. All right. Let's go. All right. We'll catch you guys later and we're going to get this thing out of the trailer and back in the garage where it belongs.